The following contains spoilers for Spider-Man Far From Home. With Spider-Man Far From Home's mid credit scene revealing that Peter Parker is Spider-Man to the entire world, it seems that we'll be getting an outed Spidey in the MCU. But what's the reason behind this? And is it the best for business? Well, many fans would say no, especially since Spider-Man is one of the very few characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe who actually has a secret ID. So perhaps it's time to explore the history of this move and see why it may not be in Marvel's favor, because today... Dave knows Spider-Man's not-so-secret identity. Why, oh why, do they keep revealing Spider-Man's identity? There are certain things that Marvel seems bent on doing with the character of Spider-Man, and one of the biggest is revealing who's behind the mask to the entire world. Why? Well, let's examine it. Looking back on Marvel history with groups like the Fantastic Four, we'll note that the fictional public at large knew who they were. No masks, the Baxter Building had their logo on it, and they were treated mostly like celebrities. And remember that these were the first major Marvel breakout stars who weren't inherited from the timely comics days. Also, with these characters, Marvel was trying to shake up the genre of the superhero just a little bit. They figure why not make a team instead of a solo star? Why not focus more on science fiction? And why not ditch the secret identity shtick? Which, a apparently was a good idea, as the team sold like crazy initially. Now, this isn't to say that other companies weren't already trying some of these ideas themselves, I'm just trying to point out that Marvel was specifically trying to break free from superhero stereotypes with this title, even if there were already other examples of people doing such. Anyway, with the success of Marvel's first family, a lot of their DNA can be seen echoing throughout Marvel's other properties. Tony Stark is a genius inventor just like Reed Richards, Hulk is a combination of brains and brawn like The Thing, and the X-Men were another superhero team slash surrogate family. But when we look at Spider-Man in particular, we see even more of the FF's influence. He's a teenage hero just like Johnny Storm, he's a big old nerd just like Mr. Fantastic, he's a shy outcast like Ben Grimm, he has a science-based origin, he's a New Yorker, and so on. How However, the big piece of the puzzle that's missing is that Marvel's public citizens don't know who he is. Now, throughout the years, Marvel has tested the waters repeatedly on this. The idea of a public Peter Parker was shown in the alternate reality storyline of House of M. Peter Parker's identity is eventually revealed to the world in Ultimate Spider-Man, similar to how it was done in Into the Spider-Verse. And of course, a living main continuity Spider-Man unmasked during the Civil War comic arc. Now, the wall crawler isn't the only solo hero to follow in fantastic footsteps. Not only are characters like Captain America and Wolverine fairly public figures, but Tony Stark and Matt Murdock have also went out in the open with their alter egos as well. But that leads me to a certain issue, because Matt Murdock books have eventually tried to put the genie back into the bottle, where the public now isn't 100% sure if the blind lawyer really is Daredevil or if this is just another silly internet rumor. And let's also remember that Peter Parker himself went and magic his ID back into obscurity with Do Ex Machina following the brand new day storyline. So Marvel should know and learn from their own mistakes that while they may find it appealing at first, a public Peter is not anywhere near as compelling a character as one who has a secret identity. And while characters like Iron Man who already act like rock star celebrities can totally own going public, introverted nerds like Spidey are better off utilizing their shyness to connect to a private persona at least from a writing standpoint. It just fits the character better and it just makes more sense. And while I can appreciate a company wanting to try new things, sometimes it's good to remember that tropes become tropes for a reason. Furthermore, the appeal of Spider-Man for many, at least among certain communities, is that he is so ambiguous. As Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics puts it, a neutral mass allows more people to identify with a character, because the less specifics we see, the larger the audience can be that can identify. And with Spider-Man being covered from head to toe, he could be any race, any age, anybody, making him more relatable. Now sure, this is a complete oversimplification of Scott McCloud's point, but I'm just using it to quickly convey a concept here. So just remember that when it comes to Spider-Man, in short, the more celebrity that he has in his own comics, and the more he's married to a supermodel, and the more exposed his face is to the world, the less people can relate to him. And Peter Parker's real power comes from a secret identity allowing people to identify. Oh, and just a thought here. After Tony Stark won Civil War in the MCU and the Sokovia Accords were signed, well, Peter was on Tony's team and they had a promise of accountability, so shouldn't his identity already have been available for the public anyway? Just wondering. Hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up, the notification bell, and that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, Dave Knows.